Gamers, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the hardest triumph to get the Cortezan seal in the game, at least in my opinion. Maybe one of the harder, or at least more annoying, triumphs for any raid in Destiny, period. I personally feel it's not too bad of a triumph as long as you communicate, but I feel like a lot of the community absolutely hate this triumph and don't want to do it. So I thought, you know what, let's throw up a video talking about it and maybe a little bit of a guide for people to get through it. So the triumph in question is called Featherlight. The trigger for this is to complete the Abyss encounter in the stills without letting any player reach 10 stacks of Weight of Darkness in Crota's End. So what this effectively means is that you need to be using your entire fire team in juggling and cooperating properly, and you can't have people screwing around grappling to places that are outside of the lamps, or getting super far behind, or getting killed, because once you're out of rotation, you're just kind of screwed, and that might just entirely cause the wipe for that triumph alone. Now, maybe the triumph doesn't sound too bad to the untrained eye, or I guess in this case, ear, but it does get a little complex once you actually start doing it. The reason for this is because while it seems easy to just, hey, pick up the chalice, get enlightened, pass it to the next person, rinse and repeat, yeah, that's fine, but eventually, if you keep doing this process too quickly or too just spaced out, you will eventually run into the problem where too many people are enlightened, somebody can't take it in time, or you just simply have too much weight of darkness, and by the time somebody does take it, bam, you're at 10, or somebody in the fire team is at 10, and then you have to wipe. So to do this triumph, first thing I do want to talk about is just recommending what you should use, in my opinion, and it really comes down to a couple of things. Number one, I want to talk about Eager's Edge. It is a helpful tool in getting out of bad situations and speeding up the process in the sense of you can go from one lamp to another much quicker than just simply, you know, walking while you can't really jump. But, as the name would suggest, this is a double-edged sword. Because while you could move faster with it, you could also swing yourself into a pendulum, swing your teammate into a pendulum, bump somebody, or even just sword into a thrall or a curse thrall, and then you would die because you just, well, you sorted into a curse thrall. So generally speaking, I think people should bring it, but... Use it only sporadically when you feel like you absolutely must if you're catching up to somebody because you're super far behind or you have an absolutely clear lane where you see no thrall, no curse thrall, no holes, no pendulums, etc. Also, quick note, if you are going to use a sword, make sure you try to look up when you sword because that eliminates most of the issue of, you know, auto-targeting with a sword like across through your back to a thrall that's behind you, which it shouldn't do, but the game does anyway but looking up seems to at least help alleviate that. The other two things I wanted to mention are either running Arc for both Amplified and also Arc Buddies, particularly in Warlock, because the Arc Buddies will attack the Thrall around you. Now, Arc in general, I want to mention because of Amplified, because, well, you just get better movement, and better movement means you guys stay together, quicker pace, get up top faster, and that just is generally a better time. And the other thing is Grapple. So Grapple on Strand is very helpful because Strand does not care about how much Weight of Darkness you have, how much movability you lost, it'll still activate and just push you forward and give you a nice boost. Also, it flies over the pendulums, or if you thought you just fell into a hole, you can quickly activate it and then get out of the hole and survive. So it comes in really, really clutch. It's also by far the fastest method and safest method to use because unlike Eager's Edge, it's not going to swing you into an enemy or a pendulum or your teammate by accident. It'll just propel you forward. And hey, if your teammates are running strand, they can also use it with you and you can get further along just safely. So to go about this mechanically for the Triumph anyway, I think the best choice for this as a method is to just have a one through six system with your fire team and specifically design somebody to be in a particular slot and never fall out of that slot no matter what in going in your order. So what I mean by example is let's say I drew slot number four in my fire team, right? So we start off, number one takes it, then number two takes it from them, and so on and so forth, and then I will always be number four, taking it from number three, and then player number five will always take it from me. And you never break out of this order. Once player six has it, then you restart the chain, and it goes back to player one, and then until it gets back to player three, that's when I will take it again. And you never break this chain because this way, you will always be in an organized fashion, and you will always go to each lamp slash preserve, sorry, preservation node, and then you will dunk it in, always in that order. So, for example, at the beginning of the Abyss, player one obviously will take the Chalice at the very beginning. We will go to the first lamp, 
they will dunk it into the preservation node there. Then player two picks it up from there, and then we continue on forward. So it'll go to three, then four, and then by player five, we'll probably reach the second preservation node, which is where I would put it into the node. Then player five would take it from the node, as they were the next one in line, and the order continues to rinse and repeat as you climb up the abyss. Now, there's a couple of things that you should keep in mind while you have to do this rotation. Mainly, the number one cause of you failing this triumph is going to be somebody who is not enlightening their lamp when they should be. Now, when you're going through this rotation, you're always going to get enlightenment when somebody takes a chalice from you, obviously, unless you're dunking into the node. But otherwise, you will have enlightenment. And every time you do get enlightened, you will be in charge of lighting up that next lamp that you're currently going to. When you're doing that, you need to pay attention to your timer and, of course, where your fire team is by location because you do not want to be popping your enlightenment on a lamp to activate it any later than an X7 weight of darkness. The reason for this is pretty simple. For one, it takes a little bit to actually activate the lamp for the rotation of the little circle when you press interact. Number two, it depends on how much weight of darkness your teammates have, as you won't always have the exact same amount every single time. So somebody, while you're at seven, might be at eight or creep into nine, or God forbid, already going to nine. So you want to just give them the extra insurance that you're activating at seven, and they're not going to hit ten and then automatically fail your run. You also want to activate it to the point where it's not going to take the team too long to just get rid of all of their snacks, because staying at a lamp for too long eventually makes it about to erupt, and then... You know, who knows, somebody may get caught by a thrall for a split second, and then boom, they die, which just creates a chain reaction of, oh, I'll get the res, I'll do this, I'll do that, and that could be a run killer by itself. Now, it's also worth noting that you can, of course, skip some lamps in the rotation and just go straight to the next lamp if your team is confident and you're low on stacks and you know that you'll get to that next lamp and be able to activate it because you've already activated the node for the next set of them. And that way you can save time and then cause less mistakes that might potentially end your run. But if you're not comfortable in zooming around and speeding forward in a quick fashion, it's perfectly fine to take your time and go at a slow pace. So as long as you're not making those critical mistakes where somebody's just going to throw at lamp number 13 and then you have to go all the way to the bottom back again. So depending on your pace, go fast or if you like, just keep going slow if that works for you. For this last point, it's not really a tip per se, but I will mention it in case it comes up ever in someone's run. So the triumph is you can't reach 10 stacks of darkness, right? However, the triumph does not say, hey, you're at 8 darkness and you know, you're about to wipe your team for this triumph. So you could just die. Literally, you could just die. If you die, you were 8 stacks and when you revive, you will be at 0 stacks. Therefore, you didn't hit 10. So you can kind of mini bypass this loss of triumph in a run. So if you're like super behind and you know you're not going to make it, you're going to hit 10, you're going to screw everybody over, just like rocket yourself, uh, let the thrall kill you, fall in a hole, whatever it may be, and then somebody can just res you and you will be back to zero stacks and save the run. And that's all I got for now. So hopefully this guide helps you guys get it done yourself. Maybe the background footage fills in the gaps if my rambling did not make sense. Or feel free to ask questions if something didn't make sense, and I'll try to answer them in the comments below. And if you have a suggestion of your own on how you beat it and you thought it was really helpful, feel free to put that down there as well. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, share, subscribe. It does help the channel and is much appreciated in trying to beat the YouTube algorithm. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right? Bye.